Hey everyone, today we're going to be going after aspen slash birch trees. I'm going to show you the relatively straightforward technique I use to churn these things out by the dozens. Before we get started, ideally you want to be in a well ventilated area and you want to be comfortable playing with fire. Okay, let's talk supplies here. I've got a tub of 18 gauge copper wire. I bought this 20 years ago from an electrical wholesaler. There was about five miles on this tub. This is gonna last for all the trees I'll ever need to build. Sizal baling twine. I bought this from an agricultural dealer. Uh, this is used for tying up hay and straw bales. Uh, crayons, white crayons. I found that Staples sells uh, crayons in bulk so you can buy just the colors you need. So I put 24 crayons in this tin and that's gonna last me for quite some time. Uh, we also need spray bombs, flat black flat white. We need spray glue and that is how we're going to affix our leaf material. Now leaf material this is going to be your personal preference. This is stuff I, uh, I've had this for 20 years as well. The manufacturer no longer exists but there's lots of other places where you can get the stuff. Just go searching around and find the stuff that suits your needs best. As for tools we're going to need a cordless drill with an adjustable chuck. We're going to need a torch. We're going to need an old pot. Uh, we're going to need a smaller uh, carafe to go inside that pot. We're going to use this as a double, bo uh, pardon me, a double boiler setup. Uh, we're going to melt our wax crayons in this vessel here. I like to use a metal spoon. I like to have this all metal because it's going to retain the heat and it's going to allow that wax to flow nicely. Uh, we also need for final prep a fine point medium sharpie. That's how we're going to add the detail to our bark. So I'll show you how to cut your material and we'll get outside and spin up some masters and get on with this project. All right, so we're gonna cut some uh, copper here. The easiest way I found to do it is use an old piece of hardboard, okay? This is 14 inches long. I want long stems on these trees. We're gonna be introducing fire and if you don't have enough length, you're gonna end up burning your fingers. So 14 inches, a line drawn dead center at the seven inch mark. You're gonna take your copper and you're gonna line it up on that mark, hold it tight. And all you do is you just wrap around like this. So every time you go around there, that's two trees. So we'll just do that. That's, you know, probably about 20 armatures there. You get back to that center point, you cut that off. We'll take our bucket here so we can catch these things. We trim, trim, trim. Flip it over to the other side. You got your line on both sides, cut. Cut, cut, there we go. We got our tree armatures. All right, so for our sizal, we're gonna pull out of the center of the spool. And because I'm doing N-scale trees, I'm gonna cut these things off to two inch lengths. And I always cut up lots of material so I don't run out halfway through the process. All right, let's get over and spin up some masters. All right, I like doing my trees outside, so this is what I've come up with for a setup. I've got a pair of ice grips clamped to a piece of three quarter inch plywood that's inch and a half wide. That's just a scrap piece of uh, plywood I had laying around from benchwork construction. And in turn, I clamp that to my outdoor patio table. Nice and portable. Uh, like I said, I like doing this outside, even though as you can see, it was snowing, and in fact, it's snowing right now. So you're gonna take your copper wire, insert the end, and squish that down until you get a loop like this. Turn it 90 degrees, squeeze it tight, and you're gonna pull the wire like this so it's nice and tight right up against those jaws. You're gonna take a piece of sisal, you're gonna untwine or unravel it, split it in half roughly, okay? This works well for end scale trees, of course, depending on how full you want the tree or what scale you're doing, depends on how much sisal you put in there. You're gonna insert, and you're gonna pull this tight, twist the end like this, okay? Now you don't have to get carried away with how neat and tidy this is, but you wanna spread this out. Uh, for half a uh, thing of sizal, you're gonna spread it out over say an inch and a half to two inches of that trunk, okay? Doesn't have to be uniform. You do, however, want it nice and tight up against the jaws. You're gonna take your chuck or your drill with that adjustable chuck, spin it up, and twist until either this end or this end breaks off. In the pine tree video, you didn't want this breaking off. For these guys, it doesn't matter. There you go, there's your master. 
Okay, let's get these things trimmed up here. So because of the twist of the wire, we've got a spiral like this, okay? Our wires kind of line up in this plane. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our snippers, we're gonna go down, we're gonna follow that plane and cut right at the top, right up against the sisal. Then you're gonna spin 180 degrees and you're gonna cut in the same direction like this. And what that should do is kind of leave a little bit of a point on the top. Okay. Once you've got that point on the top, you're gonna take the sisal and you're gonna grab it in your fingers and you're just gonna pull straight up like this, okay? So if you have to, you can put a little twist into it and that's gonna make that sisal stick up above the top of the wire, the top of the trunk. And then you're just gonna trim, okay? So you don't have to get carried with it. Don't trim right up against there. You wanna leave some of that rope sticking up, that twine sticking up. And look at pictures, get the shape that you want. I would normally be doing this over a bucket, but I really want you guys to get a good look at how this is going. So it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, a little straggly is a good thing. It adds some real interest to the tree. I've got 10 of these spun up and trimmed, ready to go. I like to work in about 10. They're on an inch and a half styrofoam block just jammed in there. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint the trunks white, okay? You don't have to get too carried away with this. This is just gonna act kind of as a primer for the wax, but it's also a base just in case some of that wax comes off. You don't have to worry about getting the foliage. We're gonna paint that black a little later on. While the paint was drying up on my trunks, I heated up my wax. So I got my old pot here, some water in it. Uh, my secondary pot, I peeled and broke up the crayons, dropped them in there. I've got the spoon in there too, brought that to a boil. Once this was nice and liquid, I turned the heat down to a simmer. We're now ready to put on our wax. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna grab, let's grab a little bit better one here that you can see proper. We're gonna grab our trunk. We're gonna get some wax on the spoon like this. And you're just gonna take, you're gonna rub that up and down like that, okay? There you go, applied. Sometimes this stuff goes on really nice and evenly, and sometimes you'll get a little bit of a lump. If you get a little bit of a lump, let's see, we'll do this one, see if we, it might be a little bit more lumpy. If you get some lumps on there or it's a little bit thick, we're gonna take care of that in the next step. All right, time to introduce some fire here. So you can see we've got some blobs of wax on here. We don't have good coverage up into the branches here. Uh, so we're gonna even this trunk out. And uh, this is a technique thing. You're gonna have to just practice this one and then you're gonna eventually get good at it. Uh, you wanna make sure you're not getting the fire too close to here because this stuff's flammable. It's gonna go up like nothing. So we've got this extra little tab on the bottom. That's why we're making this extra long. We've got our torch, okay? You're gonna introduce heat. I go six to eight inches back. And I'm just gonna roll this around so I get nice, even heat. Once it starts to flow, I spin it upside down like this, and then I spin it like this, okay? We got this blob on the bottom. We can take care of that real quick. There we go, okay? So the spinning motion is gonna keep it even on the trunk. You can see by tilting it this way and letting it flow, we've now got good coverage up into the branches. We've got a nice even trunk, uh, a nice even bark on our trunk now. Okay, on to the next step. All right, time to paint the branches here. So we got our flat black. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paint all this and feather it just slightly down the trunk here. So I'm gonna go back and forth like this, nice and light. Slight feather down onto the trunk. Make sure you get the top there. All right, we're good to go. All right, so here we have our branches are all painted up. We've got our feathering effect here. We've got some extra little splatter here because the paint, uh, there's not much paint left in the can. So it gets a little splattery at the end, which is just fine. It just adds to the whole effect. But what we want to do is we want to add some black marks to the trunk with our Sharpie. So all you're going to do is just bump the Sharpie across the trunk like this. And then turn it a little bit, work your way back down, back and forth like this. Okay, just keep going until you have the effect that you want. All right, that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now it's time to get color on the top. All right, we've got our tree material. We've got our spray glue. Remember, a little goes a long way, so just a quick dusting like that. You're gonna roll it into your leaf material. 
knock off the excess, blow off any extra, make sure it's on there nice and solid. If you're happy with that, it's ready for the layout. I'm going to tone them down a touch. I don't like that they're just a touch too bright. I'll show you how to do that and then they are ready for planting. The last step I take to finish these things off is just hit them with a light dusting of white paint. That's going to tone the color down and help blend everything together. While these trees do take a little bit of time to build, they are well worth the effort. They add so much to your scenery and they're a pile of fun to build. Give them a whirl. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.